Hello, everyone, and welcome to the last of the away games. The away games going away, but oh, what a time we had for the last six years. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Kevin McCaffrey, and look over there for one more time. It's Adam Mamawala. Yes, at some point we did switch from doing it in person to doing it remotely. And the irony of it is when we did it in person, I would drive so far. I would come from Bay Ridge to a store. Yeah, I don't know why it didn't occur to I, I feel like the technology existed at the time. Like, we could have probably done it this way, maybe. I don't it, know. It existed, but it wasn't as simple as it is now. It might literally no. be the only good thing that came from the murderous scourge of COVID, is that now people are just <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I can stay home and talk to people, and the and the video right. stays there. And gosh, we've been doing it this way for, for most of the time we've been doing it. Six years, Adam. We're a little over the six-year anniversary as we uh, as we come here for our last one. Wild. Wild. It's wild. We're at Away Games Pod, and you know that. And we're we're gonna keep using that Twitter. So we'll be we'll be out there oh, tweeting yeah. about things, and we'll tell you all off the top what you're gonna hear today. You're gonna hear some clips, uh, some fun clips over uh, from the past six years and the very fun people we've had on this uh, on this podcast. And Ad, maybe we'll have Adam name all of them at uh, at some point to give a thank <laughs> you to to everyone who's been on here. Uh, his exhaustive list of of uh, all our guests, and uh, we're gonna talk about you know, why we did this, why we're leaving, our favorite moments, our favorite players, our favorite games of the time, the era that was the Away Games era from March 16th, I believe, 2018 mm -hmm. till now. Wow. So, and Adam, do you want to know how long it's been? Here's a clip that'll tell you from uh, a guest we had, a minor leaguer, uh, a low-level minor leaguer telling us about something. We noticed on your uh, Instagram yesterday that you, uh, you appeared to be like working on a, a new pitch. So I'm curious, like, what are you working on down there? Yeah, when I was in uh, Arizona for spring training, they um, introduced me to a slider, started throwing it, feels real good, and I'm really impressed with how fast it's been coming along, and I'm really enjoying throwing it, so I'm excited to actually throw it against hitters. You know what? Some of you may have recognized the voice of you, uh, Darvish. There, I'm joking. It's obviously <laughs> Justin Steele. Um, I got my ass well, on that one. <laughs> I tell you what, future us can report that the slider working out pretty well for Mr. Steele. I thought that was so fun, man. Justin That's Steele. So cool. We've had so many fun guests uh, over the years, and uh, it, it's it's been it's been such a good time. But Justin Steele, when I think about the guests we've had on the show, sort of stands out in a way because we we contacted him when he was you know in the lower level minors as a mm -hmm. pitcher was play, was pitching well, and he agreed to come on. We had him on three times, I want to say. Yeah. One yeah. time after a tornado or something chaotic. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, we saw his steel was he. He's like, I got, I got to call you back. And then he was like trying to find signal in Mississippi after a literal tornado had ripped through, and he was just wandering through the backyard. We saw him there. We saw him in the spring training. Is is he? He yeah. reported to us right after he got a PS5, which was big news at the time. And uh, I think he's he's such a fun guest that we've had because it's we we saw him from the lower minors to yeah. a Cy Young candidate and that clip he's telling us about learning his slider they talk about Steele being a two-pitch pitcher these days wow. and that's one of them it's a misnomer that's two pitches but uh, it's so I think it's so cool to hear it like Justin Steele and I believe yeah. 2021 being excited yeah. about this new pitch he's learning I mean, listen, I don't want to blow up his spot, but we've known the guy since his Instagram handle was Mr. Steel Yo Girl, and now he's a you know, big big professional ball player. You don't even know what a setup artist you are. The first and most important <laughs> question I had to ask you, it's really, it's not even a question, it's a compliment. I'm going to go, uh, go out on a limb and say that you have, hands down, the best Instagram handle in the entire club's organization. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's at Mr. Steel Yo Girl. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, if you if that's your last name, it would you'd be doing yourself a disservice to not have that as your Instagram handle. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, we're yeah. not scouts, but that's an eighty grade. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so my follow up question is: When you are in the majors, what is your players' weekend jersey going to be? He wasn't even it's in the majors yet. Of that right? I get called Steely and Steely Dan a lot, so I might have to go that way, or I could do the Instagram handle. I got a few options. So I'll I'll have to wait. To you'd see have to shorten it like a like a. Uh, license plate or something like steel mm -hmm. like put, put, put it like a gamer tag <laughs> yeah <laughs> throw I'm, some emojis in there have some fun with it. yeah 
Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, gamer. T- I also it should note that it's so if people want to follow, it's Mister Dot Steel, like Justin's name is spelled S T E E L E <laughs> underscore Yo <laughs> underscore Girl G U R L, and that is verified. So I don't know if that means you've been verified as a girl stealer or not. <laughs> He's got the blue check mark. Yeah, I'll just let people's minds wander about that part. <laughs> not bad. <laughs> Yeah, he's... that's so great. It... I, I also have to say to to Justin Steele's credit, he uh, we've had a number of people on like when they're in the minors, and I feel like invariably we would like give them a hard time, and be like, "So you're gonna like big league us once you you know you're out of the minors?" He like I don't do this often because I'm not we're not like buddies, but every once in a while I'll like DM him about something and mm-hmm. he'll respond like almost every time. Like I sent him a message over the weekend saying like, "Hey, really cool to see you out there on opening day." Like you know rest up soon and save those bullets for the playoffs or something like that. And he like immediately was like, Hey, thanks so much, man. I really appreciate you like thinking about it. Like the guy's a Cy Young candidate and he still will like respond to fans and stuff. Like yeah. That. I, really, it's really dope. <laughs> I remember him tweeting me. Uh, 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 he DM me after I tweeted something. It was a joke. It involved Bernie Sanders and Tucker Carlson. And he, uh, he, he didn't click like, but he, it was a political tweet, but he did uh, DM me. He was like, uh, this got a LOL from me. I hope this gets the love it deserves. And uh, yeah, That's it's cool. just, it's just been a fun thing to meet that guy. And you're right. He, he has never big leagued and, and we understand players, you know, it's it's hard for Adam and I to find time to guest on other people's podcasts. So we understand that it is difficult. But we've, you know, we've interviewed a number of players over the year, <laughs> years. And I will say there was a number uh, of them that were, were lower on the totem pole and certainly now than Steele, who were not as welcoming. <laughs> you know, yeah. not they were mostly nice, but Steele always stood out. So that's like, that's one thing, man, uh, going back to the beginning of us do, starting this podcast. That's something that I'm so glad we got out of this and that you know Incredible. we can never take away no and I, and I think covid was certainly a huge part of that because all of a sudden people who were about to be incredibly busy in the spring of that year had literally nothing to do and also we didn't have a lot to do so there was a time where like i think both of us uh were kind of just like shooting our shot with a bunch of people and sliding into various current <laughs> and former players dms to be like hey no one is doing anything do you want to hop on a on a zoom call and, and chat and like, you know, we'll, I can give the full exhaustive list later, but just from yeah. memory during that time, we talked to like in 2020, we talked to Alec Mills. We talked to Kyle Farnsworth. We talked to John Lieber. Um, I do think Steele was around that, that time, like the first mm-hmm. time that we got in touch with him. Um, and I mean, the, the, the coolest person that we interviewed and you know, this, if you're, you're a listener is, is Joe Madden, which is something that like, we didn't even seek out someone. And that was always cool when like, we've never been delusional about like the reach that this podcast has or the numbers that it has. But I do think that at least within like Cubs world, people are aware of us or at least our Twitter handle, if not the the podcast. Right. And it's been cool a couple of times where we got to like interview the guy that made the, you know, miracle, the Cubs musical or, um, you know, when Joe Madden was doing his, his book launch. So, um, that I mean, that was, I think to me, that's like my favorite moment of the whole podcast in terms of like an actual podcast recording that we got to do to have a fucking, you know, to cheers with Joe Madden and then, and for him to be exactly who you would want him to be just like incredibly present and magnanimous and fun and down to earth. And like, I'm, I have no doubt that we were one of 12 interviews he did that day and for him to not phone it in and be like the best version of who we would have hoped he would be so cool. Yeah, and I, I think that's a great way to put it. And uh, for an example, here's one of the Madden clips you'll hear today. All right, my question for you is some hard-hitting journalism. You can see our names. I'm Adam Amwala. He's Kevin McCaffrey. If you were going to give us ball player nicknames, what would you nickname us? Oh, uh, we got his last name. Adam Mamawala. <laughs> I, I, okay, Mamawala. I, I was trying to get through that. Right, it's a tough one. Yeah, <laughs> Walla Walla Banger. Uh, oh, Walla Banger. Oh, yes, nice. Walla Banger. And who's <laughs> Kevin? Kevin. Mm-hmm. Kevin, you're too. Kevin McCaffrey, man. That's. It's just. I feel like it was usually the name and then a Y. I would not, I would just, okay, was, the okay y. I got yeah. it. I got it. I would just call you okay. free. I would call McCaffrey free. free. Oh, I love it. Yeah, you would be, you'd be Walla Banger and that would be free. Free, I'll take free all day long. It's a good price. Yeah. It's a little American. It's uh, <laughs> I, I, I love all the angles on that. Yeah, I'd go uh, free. Yeah. Oh, that's great.
yeah, we'll get a couple more Madden clips later, uh, later for you. But yeah, that was, uh, you know, he's just a playful guy. And he began, he didn't have, he didn't have shots on him, but we did a shot and a beer with him. He just yeah. substituted the, the closest drink. We he did talk find. some wine. He gave us a wine rack. He gave us wine uh, racks. Yeah. That's one of those things too, where just like listening back to that. And I've, uh, I'm not so so self indulgent that I like listen to my own podcast that much, but that's one that I've gone back and listened to like a couple times, and like he was the manager of the greatest team in our lifetime. He was mm-hmm. the manager during the greatest era of Cubs baseball that we've ever seen, and I mean, how many times have we heard that guy give a press conference or talk to reporters? And there's something so cool about like just hearing him say our names like that i I know that (laughs) that voice has been in my head for so long it's the same way as when i ordered that uh pat hughes cameo for that uh friend of mine who helped hook up the uh tour that i got to take uh at wrigley field with ken where like when i hear pat hughes say this message is from adam mama walla i'm like what the (laughs) hell this guy's voice is saying my name what's happening well not even in in a grand sense but in a literal sense it's dreamlike it's like a dream because in a dream you would maybe hear pat hughes Mm -hmm. say your name you know turns out you can get it for like a hundred bucks or something i don't know how much i I forget exactly what the cameo is great but i i've i've gotten a couple i got i was given a pat hughes cameo for my birthday from my wife and it's great we can access it, but he he does this long call where I'm on the bases running around and I'm thrown yeah. out at home and so he funny. turns it into a voicemail yeah. message. He goes, yeah. McCaffrey is out, but he'll be back. And it's such a fun, you know, it's just like it's what a great. weird world we're in where these people are this accessible. So we got a lot of fun clips we're going to bring to you and, and talk about as we go. This is probably going to be one of the biggest uh, episodes we've ever had and why the fuck not. But Adam, let's do, you know, the Cubs exist in present time. Let's talk about mm-hmm. them this week and uh, and your trip down to Texas for opening weekend uh, and your own shows before we get into the uh, the, the, the rest. Well, of the look, track. I, you know, I, I, I know that uh, we got to be superstitious in baseball land, but May I just say that since I went to see the Cubs, they haven't lost a game. Ooh, like May I that. May just say that they were 0-2. All of a sudden, your boy goes to a game, and they just never lose again. Well, I mean, a combination present day and look back. During our run is when you had the, the undefeated season of games, right? Yeah, which sucks because it was a season that ended in the worst way. That was 2018. But in 2018, yeah. I was 9-0 and in person, which is like statistically almost impossible. It's a nine game parlay. I mean, it is just, it's just a nine game parlay that you hit. The odds are are whack. And, uh, and yeah, that was, it's funny that uh, 2018 we had our in-person experiences were such yin and yang, but Mm -hmm. sort of encapsulates the era of these Cubs. You went nine and oh, and I went to the last two games of the year, the the last game against the Brewers for the division and the longest game at Wrigley loss to the Rockies with my mom. Yeah. Can't end any worse than that, any harder than that. I mean, people forget that was a 95-win team. It was a really good mm-hmm. team. But yeah, that was... And uh, mentioning superstition, since we began this podcast, the Cubs have not won a single playoff game. So you're welcome for leaving. Maybe we get out We're of the open way. Open the door for the Cubbies to finally win again. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> yes. I mean, the, talk about something that's improbable. Like when we started this in, in uh, before the 2018 season, I would have bet a million dollars... If you if the bet was will the Cubs win one playoff game between now and 2024, mm-hmm. I would have bet my life savings, which isn't that much. It's certainly not a million dollars. <laughs> sure, it it seems it feels impossible that that is the case. And I mean, I guess in terms of actual technical playoff games, they've only played three of them. I mean that because right? they lost the game to the Rockies and they lost to the 2020 20. series to uh, the two games of yeah, Florida. That's it. Yeah. Which feels like it didn't even happen because like what a weird time that was. Yeah, that feels that, that feels like a bizarre dream for sure. Uh, but so far, I mean, ultimately so far so good, uh, aside from friend of the show, Justin Steele being on the injured list now. Yeah. And it seems like he'll be back early May is what they're saying right now. Steele says he's all right. You know, he's Justin Steele has become the preeminent reporter on Justin Steele's health. He, you know, came right. out after he got hit by the comebacker and tweeted, you know, I'm okay, my bracket is not. And then <laughs> now he says he will be, you know, he says he'll be back soon. He was seen throwing in the outfield at the Cubs game. Uh, but yeah, four in a row. Now, granted, three are the Rockies. And good Lord, does that team suck. 
I mean, maybe some of the sloppiest defense I've seen from a professional baseball team ever. Uh, like, it, every single game has had miscues. And I know it's like a wet field and the weather's been shitty, but like, right. just a horrible, horrible team. Having said that, as we all remember, <laughs> the Cubs lost two out of three to the 103 loss Rockies in September last year. And it Good killed Lord. Them. That was the beginning of that trip where they then went and lost four straight to the Diamondbacks and basically were like, toast after that so, that was a wrap on yes, the, the Cubs yeah. should sweep the Rockies but they don't always do that and credit to them for doing it exactly and watching the yeah and talking about that sloppy defense the probably the most fun play of the year so far was Christopher Morrell's you know little league homer the uh the hard hit line drive single to left that skipped under Nolan Jones's glove and then he threw it to the shortstop who decided to not look at the ball and <laughs> kicked it away as Morrell got home so that was so fun to see and yeah the team the Rockies not since a league of their own has someone missed a cutoff man so many times <laughs> incredible yes in the the Rockies were so bad, but watching it, I got the feeling that at worst, I think the Cubs offense is annoying, you know, at, mm -hmm. at, at worst, and it could be better, but it's, there's a lot of guys who know how to work a strike zone, and that includes right. Morrell right now, who's making mm -hmm. contact with everything in zone and not chasing. Yeah, I mean, the defense is definitely concerning, because it's like, now enough bad. things have happened. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. It is bad. Yes. I want to believe that it's he's just still getting his, his sea legs, but like, mm -hmm. as I don't know if you watched the game last night, they're up 8-2, to two, uh, or 5 nothing, and then 8-2, to two, they blow the lead, and then come right back and, and score and win the game, but like, that error made a big difference. Nico Horner mm -hmm. making an uncharacteristic error made a difference. So like some yeah. of that's got to be cleaned up. Dansby Swanson at the game that I was at on Sunday booted a ball. I don't know if it took a weird hopper if he just missed it. Um, but obviously you're going to want to clean that sort of stuff up. I think say a lost a ball in the lights. I, I'm did. assuming is what happened. Which we, um, we hate to see that. Don't we folks? <laughs> but we right. got to get Jesus say, I mean, um, I'll tell you what he's not missing yeah. is the baseball with a bat no. right now. Him and Morrell both are just hitting the shit out of the ball. Saya into less luck, but everything yeah. Saya hits is a hundred plus. A ball at the the launch angle that he hit a home run at is almost impossible to center field, and he did yeah. a hundred. It's the hardest hit ball of his career, hundred fifteen miles per hour, I think. Um, but yeah, you you got to feel good about where the Cubs are at. I think last night would have been an incredibly crushing loss as we record this on on Thursday. And somebody tweeted it. I don't know if it's Michael Cerami or someone like that, but it was it was a perfect perfect encapsulation because I was watching the game, and like the tweet was like, no 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 no. This I've already put this in my brain as a win. I refuse to even acknowledge the idea that the Cubs won't win this game. And it was <laughs> right. very much like that. We're like, the Rockies are so bad. The Cubs are up eight to two. They're just steamrolling them. And then you look up and it's eight to eight. And you're like, hold on a second. We could lose this game. And all of a sudden, instead of this like great feeling, and now we're on this winning streak and we're four and two, we're three and three. And we just blew a game to the fucking Rockies. Like, can we please not do that? It seemed, yeah, and it, they did a good job getting a hold of the game again. Yancy Almonte and Hector Neris had a terrible day uh, out there. Those guys did, did not do the job. And there was actually a bizarre st statistical anomaly that happened in here, Adam, in terms of official scoring. I don't know if you saw it, but Alzali came... Little. Yeah, well, well, yes, that was that was bizarre because Luke Little, Evan Altman pointed this out, mm -hmm. that Luke Little uh, pitched the ninth of the previous game and on the next day pitched the first inning. Mm -hmm. When was the last time that happened? We got to get ESPN stats. 1955. Info. Was it really? Chris Kamka, yeah. I'm writing that down. Uh, that's that that's uh, that's interesting. Um, but yeah, so that happened, and then in last night's game traditionally Norris would be given the win even because he like gave up the tie and he was the pitcher in there. But there's a, a, a rule that now stipulates if the pitcher is ineffective, whatever that means, but less than an inning pitched and okay. gives up, you know, equal runs to as many outs or whatever. I, I forget the specific wording, but Norris was not awarded the win and the, the win went to Alzali. So Alzali weirdly lost the save where if you're a closer, so he doesn't you, get a win and a save. He gets, no, a that would be cool, but he yeah. only got the win where to me, okay, I'm cool with that scoring because I hate when guys get the win for sucking, but mm -hmm. this is Alzali's a closer. He wants the save on that resume more than he wants the win. So the yeah. win should go to Ben Brown. If you're going to say this is an ineffective right. start by Norris so he doesn't get the win, great, love it. But then it should go to the most effective pitcher besides the guy who got the save. Right. Yeah, what's weird about it is like, if there were such a thing as batter wins, mm-hmm, 
then you would give the win to like the guy who hits a walk off home run, even though it's a pinch hitting, uh, you know, situation, despite the fact that someone else went four for five and drove in six runs. Like it's a, it, it almost feels like there should be some sort of impartial party. That's like, <laughs> which pitcher did the most to help this team win? they get the win. And that sounds like a slippery slope, but also wins are such a bizarre stat to begin with the way they're scored that it's no more bizarre. And actually, there used to be kind of a hitter when fans of early 90s, maybe even uh, definitely 80s and maybe the 70s baseball cards know they used to keep game winning RBI stats. That was the version of how many game win like he has seven game winning RBI. Right. Exactly. Um, So that was kind of a a thing I remember from my from my circa 1990 tops collection. But um, yeah, so opening day, very fun. And also just maybe the most miraculous things that the Cubs played all three games this week. Like yes, when I was looking the at the forecast, I was like, are they not going to play a single game this entire week? And we're in New York where the weather was genuinely insane last night. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Mets have gotten rained out two games in a row, which, you know, they probably don't want to play given given their start. But yeah, opening day, I don't Were you able to watch it somewhere? The, uh, I was not, I was, uh, I believe I was traveling and or doing a show. So I didn't catch, uh, I caught very little, or, I, or yes, I had to head out to do a show. So I caught the uh, first like three innings, basically. Okay. Yeah. And, and, I yeah. was actually, I was able to listen to it on the, on the radio, which is one of my favorite ways to take in a, a Cubs game. It was mm-hmm. lovely. Yeah, and Steele was great until he got hurt, you know, and it was exciting. Oh, I'm sorry, I was talking about the home opener, but oh, I also, home opener. I watched, I watched the opener opener on a plane. Yes, so I did watch the the home opener. That was fun. Shota Imanaga took the no-hitter into the sixth, Amazing. striking out a ton of guys, not a single ground ball. I think he was a big fan of the weather as it was, because there could have been yeah. three bombs given up, oh, yeah. but I, I'm not sweating that right now. That was his first start. I loved Loved all the miss bats, loved how he pitched, and uh, it was fun to see. I saw a little bit of him in spring training, but it was cool to see Shota in a game that technically matters. He is a gif machine. He's emotional oh, yeah. on the mound. He's fun. He And it's not just uh, just the fired up after things. His mm-hmm. The way he reacts pitch to pitch, how things are called when he's surprised. He has an, acti- an actor's range of emotions that he expresses <laughs> that I think is really yeah. fun. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, you know, maybe he could have gone out for one more inning, but I don't I don't hate Cassidy. No, I like, like, you know what? This is as good as we're going to get. 100% like, let's, the right let's call. Let's have you leaving on a high note in, in your first start. Yeah, just gave up those two singles after five and two-thirds no hit. So welcome, Shota. That's uh, that's so fun to see him. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think that's that's most of my early impressions of, uh, of the season. Any other notable things? You were down in Texas for the weekend. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess what I'll say about Texas, uh, or specifically about going to Globe Life, is that my biggest knock on it was that it was... 75 degrees and they closed the roof and i what, don't understand. what are we what are we doing then just don't even it have a retractable like some, roof well exactly it was like somewhat cloudy and i guess if i'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt maybe their mindset is like if we keep the roof open and it starts to if there's like a random rain shower everyone's gonna be like why the fuck was the roof open mm-hmm. but they also had the roof closed for the thursday and the saturday game and it was the same weather all of those times it, like can Texans not handle if it's 69 degrees because it's an inappropriate number that's ungodly? Is that what <laughs> yeah, they've, uh, yeah. Governor Abbott has banned uh, the number from, from yeah. within the state. But, yeah. That's a, that's but a possibility. I, I found, I found the, the fans to be lovely. I, I, part of it is like, they have nothing to be upset about. They just won a world series. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of like, playful ribbing and then both both of us being like you know to whoever i was talking about like hey you know we both got one good for us Mm -hmm. so there was no nastiness or anything like that the one thing i will say which was interesting i don't think uh the rangers would be particularly happy about this a little bit a little bit of shadiness going on and i've only seen this once before it was at a nationals game but i went to buy uh they had brisket egg rolls because of Mm -hmm. course they did uh (laughs) these came recommended highly from our good pal ken schultz so i went to get brisket egg rolls and a beer which I think the total would have been like $27 or something like that. And the guy starts talking to me. He's being friendly, the, the employee. And then he goes, you, you got, he goes, you have cash. And I, I didn't like know what he was getting at. And he's like, th- th- throw me a 20. We'll just, you know, we'll keep this between you and me. And I was like, Oh, and for then he, real? Was, he was like, Oh, for real, for real. And he was like, just hand it to me under the, uh, under the, the basket. So I like, I was so flustered that I, I didn't even <laughs> have time to like, <laughs> ask myself if I should be doing this. And so I took out, I had a 20, I took it, I handed it to him like under the thing. And then he very clearly, almost like when, uh, like if someone dealing blackjack did something shady and they know they're being watched, 
he like took the money and like goes, thank you for the tip. So that like, if anyone watched the video, it would seem like <laughs> I was just giving him a tip. I, to, it, to me, it's a victimless crime, mostly. Uh, like, I don't 100%. care. hundred percent. I'm I don't sure give this a guy's oh. not getting paid that much. Oh, sorry, oh. Rangers, you don't make my 27 The Texas money. Rangers organization didn't make $27 on uh, on brisket egg rolls. Fuck them. Uh, that's great. Yeah, I, saving I, I money it. on not, uh, not opening the roof, and this is how I get back. Exactly. No, that's that's uh, that's one for the people. I'm into that. Uh, that's... Yeah, it was interesting. I've only seen that once before. It was at a, a Nats game many years ago. And the, the guy was a like, cash discount. And I thought at first I thought he meant like in general, but it was just for him to put in his pocket. I've <laughs> never experienced that. That's yeah, uh, that's, that's tremendous. I'm going to start waving I mean, around cash it. with me, you know. If he does that, if he tries that with everybody, it's unlikely that anybody's going to squeal on him. There's such a narc that they're like, I'm going to tell your boss. But he probably like feels out people that he can try it with. And if that works once an hour, mm -hmm. that's an extra 20 bucks an hour. Yeah, exactly. Also, I think that guy knows he's here for a limited time because someone it, like he, that will get busted. He's here he's... for a good time, not a long time. <laughs> exactly. And sure. fuck, yeah, that's that's a that's a good way to work. I'm into that. What a good yeah. report from the ground, Adam. That is a, oh, yeah. that oh, is yeah. some inside info from away games. Kind of the promise of the premise with away games. We we Indeed. called it away games because we're we are in New York and we're Cubs fans and uh, going to all these away games. Uh, yeah, you know. what would be interesting is how many stadiums I had been to when we started it and how many I have seen since then so it's been a, it's been a decent amount that i've yeah. off the list so let's tell people and we're gonna have the twitter account still alive at away games pod yeah. so tell people what we what stadiums you plan to hit this year and guys if you're in these markets please hit us up when uh when you're going to cubs games certainly in new york we go to the the mets and yankees games yeah. every year uh, i know i'm gonna hit uh the the marlin series and the tampa rays series because i'm gonna be down doing shows in florida those are uh, will the cubs be there yeah or no, oh, uh, oh no, uh, I, I think, God, I think one of them, but yeah. Um, so I think the, maybe the Marlins one. Um, Have you been to either park? No, so those are going to be well, new ones. buckle up, they up. suck. <laughs> they, I, I mean, I would be shocked if they didn't suck. Yeah. So I'm going to be going those. What, uh, what what Cubs games are on your away list the rest of the year? I mean, Mike, Mike Trout hit a ball so far in Miami because even the ball doesn't want to be in that stadium. <laughs> um, yeah, evict me, daddy. So of the ones that I've never been to, the big one that I'll be checking off uh, if all goes well is Houston because I have a run of shows in Texas in like late May, early June. It'll just be a uh, an Astros Twins game, I want to say. Um, so I think that might be the only other one I get to check off. I was c contemplating trying to go to Kansas City when the Cubs are there because mm -hmm. I very much want to see that stadium. But I've been in a, there. A wedding that I'm invited to. Yeah, so in terms of the ones I haven't, <clears throat> I haven't been to, just the Astros, I think, this year. Um, but in general, definitely going to be at City Field. I'm sure I'll go to Yankees games, even though the Cubs aren't there this year. Um, maybe I'll do Philly. I feel like I haven't seen a Cubs, uh, Phillies game in a long time. I've never been to Philly. Oh, let's go. Well, this is not the city, but the is. stadium. Yeah. yeah so yeah, Adam and I will nice. go to that one. Uh, I might go to, to Boston, which I've been to, but the Cubs are going to be there on April 28th. That's a good yeah. one to, to keep an eye out for. Yeah. That's a Sunday night baseball game. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I, I would like, to, I, I definitely want to get out to Wrigley. I'm, I'm contemplating trying to get out for that June series where they're playing the Mets and the Sandberg day is happening. Yeah, that sounds great. And yeah, I'll be, I, I'm planning to be at a Wrigley, at Wrigley itself for the welcome back games for both Javi and, uh, Anthony yes. Rizzo. In You're going to go to Sacramento next year? God, yeah, sure. Why not? God, eject sure, John yeah. Fisher into the sun, that soulless husk of a, 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 a <laughs> fake experience, an AI I tell you impression of a human. Thing. I hope, uh, so few people at these games, I hope every employee for the Oakland A's is doing cash only deals. Okay, you got to cash only all the How way out. Get, so, what are you going to do, fire me? <laughs> get bent, buddy. Uh, all right, so is that, I mean, I guess is that, that we, and, you know, if anything else makes sense, we, we can keep modern talking. But I think that's, I think that's my thoughts about uh, what would the week so far. Yeah, I mean, listen, you got to feel good about a four and two start. And uh, obviously the Cubs struggle a lot early on last year and, it would be nice to see them keep this up. It's a really, someone pointed out that it's like, it's a kind of a bizarre thing where you're facing the reigning world champions, then maybe the worst team in baseball. And then the Dodgers <laughs> this weekend. Yeah. Will we get a, cause I know, um, do we know the pitching matchups? Are we going to get an Imanaga versus, um, not Yamamoto. Yamamoto. Okay. They, they won't but face we will each see other. Matchups against Shohei, which would be pretty cool. Yes. That, yeah. It'll be the first time. Uh, yeah. First time Cubs seeing, seeing him, I think. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
but yeah, no, that's all. That's all I got. Why don't I guess? Why don't we start with like kind of the genesis of why we did this in the first? Do you want to start there? Yeah, let me let me play a clip that sort of leads into that because part of the genesis right, is, that, as you probably know, is that uh, Adam and I are. It'd be weird if you didn't at this point. We're both stand up comedians that are big fans of the show, and this sort of a, this is a guest that crossed crossed over between those. You probably know him now because his star has only gotten bigger and bigger. He should have a late night talk show at this point, but he did the correspondence dinner Daily Show guy for a long time and a big Cubs fan. This is us talking to Roy Wood Jr., who uh, came on the show, friend of ours very funny man one of the best comics working in america this is him t telling us his being there in person game seven world series story i was at game seven there's oh, there's man. a picture of me that kind of went around the next day um it's just me holding a sign that said losers no more which i actually yeah. made that sign <laughs> during the rain delay after the ninth inning oh That's my god <laughs> if you if you look at the top of the sign there's a water, there's like a wet mark around it or whatever. Yeah. And I'd come into the stadium with poster board and I just could never figure out what I wanted to put on the sign. <laughs> you went in and riffed a sign. Yeah. <laughs> and so I just went in, like during the rain delay, I'm standing in the tunnel in the outfield and I just made a sign. I was just like, we're going to win. I'm just going to, that way, the moment we round the moment we make that third out i'm just unfurling this That's awesome amazing. banner uh, yeah because most and... cubs fans are way too too superstitious to even try to jinx like if i write losers no more they're gonna lose i was almost in tears during that rain delay and you're making arts and crafts i'm honest, i'm pretty impressed because uh, i thought we were gonna lose so screw it and if you're gonna lose the way i figure it you may as well be happy while yeah. you're losing yeah, that's Hell the only yeah. way to fly. I mean, that was the yeah. brand for a long time. That was, we really, no one did happy while losing better well, than Well, it us. was funny because Cubs, Cubs fans and Indian fans were both trying to like, like out sadden each other, yeah. like out sabotage each other. <laughs> right. <laughs> We're gonna blow it. No, we're gonna blow it. <laughs> yeah. It was like the opposite. Of I'm the best. It was just two sports fans just going, we. We screw up more. No, trust me. We screw up more. It's a real, like, yeah, self trash talking. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Gary, Gary Payton at a therapist, just like, <laughs> just talking shit to himself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was, that was, that was the one thing that I thought was a little funny during that game. But yeah, that was a blast to go to. I'm, I'm very, very happy. And I, there's not a lot of things that I've, you know, I'm not really a sneaker guy. I'm not a jewelry guy. I live in the city, I have no car. I don't wear a lot of expensive clothing and stuff like that. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to give myself this one thing. I'm going to oh, yeah. literally, you may never see this again. If the Cubs win, it literally may never happen in your lifetime again. This is basically a sports comet. Sports comet. That was awesome. Also, Gary Payton at a therapist is a hilarious line. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I'm sure you, so you went to game three, I went to game five, Roy went to game seven, and like, even though the Cubs lost that game that you went to, I'm sure that you have no regrets about being there. And and the thing is, like, the I, I feel confident in saying, even if it doesn't happen in my lifetime, the Cubs will, again, win the World Series at some point, but it will never be like that again. It can't be. It, it, it can't, I, it like, yeah. and it, it'll be, you know, twelve out of ten amazing when it happens mm -hmm. for for us, and then especially for, maybe especially for people whose first time it is, or for people who really felt like it might not not ever happen again. But you just can't, you know, you you can't you can't build a story that long again i mean it just people don't live that many years they simply don't which is what made it so amazing and uh you know and i think you and i got to be better friends over the course of that year and over the build the years leading to that which sort Certainly. of le led to us you know the genesis of this podcast as you say yeah yeah um and and the way that it originated was i i assume it must have been sometime over the winter of like 2017 into 28 uh 2018 but my logic at the time was like I feel like we're talking about the Cubs so much all the time anyway. Why don't we try to do it into microphones? And mm -hmm. I think even from the, the beginning, I don't know that I thought that it was going to like become 
the main thing that either of us did. But in my mind, I was kind of modeling it after uh, a, what has become a very popular podcast called The Cooligans, which is two comedians that we know who are huge uh, soccer fans who started a, a soccer podcast that was essentially the same thing. It was like initially focused on the MLS team, NYCFC, and now it's like broadened into other things. But in the space that we're in, which is like, we have a very specific knowledge about a very specific team. And there are a lot of people who are knowledgeable about them. But I think we are, it's like you, me, Joe Kilgallen, and like <laughs> Roy Wood Jr. and a handful of other people. Yeah, Ken. Who are, all, yeah. Who are like, yeah, Ken, obviously. But, um, you know, people who are stand-up comedians and are funny people and also have like that level of knowledge about the Cubs you know, day-to-day. So right. that was the angle of it was like, you know, let's let's give it a try. Let's talk once a week about the Cubs and have somewhat of a comedic angle to it. And I would like to think that the people who listen to us and, and have listened to us listen for that reason. Because like, we know a lot about baseball, but I'm sure there are people who know more and are more like day-to-day with the Cubs and reporting on them. Um, but I, I think that we're funnier than most, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I, I and I'd, I'd hope so. It happens to be how, how we make money in our lives, you know? So yeah, yeah. it's a, and it is a different angle and it's, a, I think we've had a different angle and a different perspective that isn't out there in Cubs land uh, otherwise. And that is something that I feel good about over the past six yeah. years. And I, I felt good about the whole time. And there's people in, in, in Cubs world who we've gotten to know through this too, you know, mm-hmm. there's uh, and uh, the, the people I'm coming up with off the top of my head are all people who you can find in Cubs Twitter world world and some with their own podcasts like Sarah Sanchez who we've had on the show super knowledgeable uh fan uh I don't know like I don't know if she considers herself a journalist but she sure writes about the Cubs a lot that's journalism to me baby uh, yeah, but you know yeah Sarah Sanchez Greg Huss uh, and Brian Smith have done a great job you know writing about uh Cubs prospects and keeping us up to uh, keeping all of Cubs world up to date with that uh you know and uh infield fly girl our friend our friend over there these mm-hmm. are some of the people who i enjoy re- consuming their stuff they've all been guests Sandra on Marchetti, our show we got to talk about Sandra Marchetti, her, uh, yes book of poetry exactly these are people whose opinions i enjoy who who I enjoy following, whether you agree with them 100% of the time or not, no one should agree with each other 100% of the time, really. But these are informed, interesting people who it's been nice. It was a nice thing. I think we posted about how uh, it was nice to have people disappointed in us for quitting sure. <laughs> and yeah. like it was nice to hear from like the people i just named and more that they have been with us for this amount of time that they have enjoyed uh us getting together and doing the talking we've we've always done about the cubs into some microphones for six years yeah, and almost and, 300 and the, episodes and the tweeting it would have been a fun exercise to go back and look at like some of our more viral tweets i can think of some of them off the top of my head but like a lot of my enjoyment of this beyond actually doing the podcast was having that Twitter handle and being yeah. able to like for so many years, once Twitter became a thing, I would like knowingly tweet things that no one cared about from my <laughs> personal account. Being like, I know that 99.9% of my followers on this stupid app couldn't care less about the Cubs. So to have kind of ingrained ourselves in, in Cubs Twitter a bit has been, has been really fun. And I do, I genuinely like, I, I cannot foresee a time where I stop using that handle to, tweet about things no no like reason we'll change, we'll change the bio to like formerly a podcast now <laughs> just us tweeting about things right but yeah I, I, it's nice it's nice to have a, a spot to do that from because i did the same thing it's like when you're when you're a comedian and when you're you're sort of yourself as an entity professionally it, it is funny because like you you're talking about everything you're tweeting about everything you're posting videos about your life and other things and then we both have sometimes the only thing we're feeling is that we're furious that uh, fucking carl edwards jr was taken out of the seventh inning too quickly yeah. you know or we're we're and no most of the people who follow us because they like our comedy are like wait what are we talking about like it is so niche that it yeah. is nice to now have a place where we can click a button and shift gears and go over mm-hmm. and be like oh well these people will care about that i also just have to say there was a, a little like moment of, of fate just now where uh as as we were talking i took a look at the time on my laptop and it was exactly 2 20 p.m which is the exact start time of every cubs day game on the east coast incredible and, uh, catch i know for uh, midwesterners yeah. it's 120 so that's the number in your your brains the obvious shirt sells the shirts but like just the 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 time 220 
yes. brings me joy. Even like not during baseball season, it's just a number that I associate with like the Cubs game is starting. And I don't know. I, it was kind of funny that I just happened to catch it at that exact moment. That's great. And that is, uh, and that is uh, obviously we've been Cubs fans before we had our job jobs, but that is a n- nice thing <laughs> about the Cubs for people who do what we do is they give us something to do during the day when, you know, yeah. As Lee Lee Elia says, you know, Mm -hmm. everyone else is working, not us cocksuckers. We are, uh, we (laughs) we are, we're not working during the day. Not in that way. We can work with it on in the background the way we do it. But uh, what a blessing to have, uh, yeah, that, that magical time, 220 Eastern Mm -hmm. is, uh, is still, still nice. Yeah, that's the best. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that was kind of the, the origin of it at the time. I was living way down in South, in South Brooklyn. Um, Kevin was living in Astoria. It's funny, the times that we've like lived nearby was either like COVID times or we mm-hmm. weren't doing this, which is kind of amusing. Yeah. Like twice in our lives, we have lived very close to each other. And at no point during those times were we doing this. <laughs> yeah. Once we live like a block and a half from each other yeah. Uh, yeah. I- I- here in Queens and then a couple subway stops the other time. But uh, nope, no, we, we do it inconvenient is, is how we yeah. do it. Uh, and I think talking about how this begins, this is this will be uh, this clip's about a minute 40. But uh, might as well uh, tell you uh, or let you listen to a clip of the first guest first playing guest we ever had on the show, first major league guest, Alec Mills. And this is him telling us about his baseball fandom, which we didn't even know until uh, until we uncovered this bit of news. Did about. you grow up rooting for the Braves or what? Like, what was your team growing up? No, so it's actually funny. I actually grew up a Cubs fan. So my, oh, yeah, yeah my, uh, my mom and dad are both from the Chicago area. Uh, my mom is actually from uh, uh, Glen Ellen. Sure. So like the western nice. suburb. My dad's a little further south. He's about two hours south. So I think I kind of got grandfathered into being a Cubs fan. Yeah. Um, you Great. Know, so I actually remember going to several games with my grandfather, um, and it was kind of cool. Um, unfortunately, he passed away before all this had happened, but uh, yeah. you know, it was kind of cool for me to be able to to, uh, to pitch in Wrigley and and be on the Chicago Cubs after all the uh, you know fandom I had growing up and all the memories of my grandfather, That's so cool, and his family and stuff like that. So. It was really surreal. It was one of those things where uh, uh, I think it really hit me when I stood on the mound and was able to look up and see the uh, the Harry Carey sign uh, right next to the press box. So that was, for me, that was kind of when I realized, like, oh, crap, this is a Wrigley Field. So it was kind of cool for me. Oh, totally. Because there's, you know, obviously making the major leagues with, with any team is wonderful, but I, it would be hard to have the same emotional wow I'm here moment in Miami maybe you know like, yeah 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 no, be like man my grandfather loved the home run sculpture so much <laughs> and uh, it brings yeah. so many memories yeah he was a big fan of the bright orange uh, <laughs> so I actually was with Kansas City in 16 before I got traded over in 17 it's when the Cubs won it yeah. and like you said, it was one of those things where when they won the World Series like me being a lifelong fan like I mean even though the Kansas City was was my employer I was pumped that the Cubs won um so it was, you know, for that off season for them to trade me, it was like, oh my gosh, like this, this is really happening. I'm, you know, joining the world champ. So that was, that was a really cool moment for me. What so a, cool. what a chill guy too. He was our very first playing guest. We had a major leaguer yeah. on first and he was very down. He, uh, I remember he very kindly and he mentioned during the, uh, during the podcast, cause he had like memorabilia behind him, mm-hmm. uh, his own memorabilia. And he was like, right. yeah, I thought, I thought this was, would be the best background for you guys at the time you know he was just a really nice guy and we're going to talk about our favorite games and players during Mm -hmm. our six-year away games era and one of mine i'll just say it was the no hitter that that guy threw in milwaukee in 2020 yeah and i have a very specific memory of that game as well because this was like during the the height of covid but it was still it was at the time where we had learned enough that we were like you can like hang out outside with someone and you'll be fine so i was hanging out with my buddy alex who you've met before um who's from chicago's big cubs cubs and bears fan and what i remember is it was a sunday afternoon and it coincided where like the bears were playing at that time and the cubs also were playing the brewers and we were like simultaneously watching and listening to both sitting outside on my uh, little uh, deck or whatever at my apartment. And it we kind of morphed from like caring about the Bears game to being like, hey, we should maybe keep an eye on this Cubs game. And then for it to actually happen. Yeah, what a what a cool moment, even though they weren't able to maybe celebrate in the way that they would have or obviously the, the crowd wasn't there. But um, right. 
Yeah, what a what a cool thing, and and it I feel like I was especially excited because I was like, we just talked to this guy like a couple of months ago, and now he's throwing <laughs> yeah. a no hitter. Yeah, and, and throwing a no hitter in Milwaukee, which we love to see. The Cubs, the absolute kings of throwing no hitters in Milwaukee in weird ways in 2020 yes, exactly. with no uh, with no crowd. Yeah. Carlos Zambrano, obviously yeah. throwing a no hitter uh, there in a, in a strange scenario uh, when he did it too was uh what was was very cool um i guess before we get into our favorites because i because i want to be i want to be positive and we could be the reason we're leaving could be positive too but uh i want to you know have a mostly positive run towards the end should we because ta- uh, that this is a question i've been asked why are we leaving now adam do you do you want to go first or should I, or or me yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think it's kind of like the same reason for both of us. But what you 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 go ahead, kick it off. Yeah, I mean, I think it's so it, the the reason like why now I guess is like you know six years is, is is a good long time, and I think we've had we've had great times, and we're as we're replaying here, and as we're going to keep talking about too. Um, but I think it's just like it, it feels like a chapter a chapter in our lives and specifically for me, a chapter of my Cubs fandom, I think Mm -hmm. too, because I love the Cubs. I love them. I'm always going to love them. They're my favorite team uh, of any sporting thing ever. The the closest emotional bond I've had to anything that's never going to change. I do. I do want, I don't, I guess like I've found my, my own enthusiasm about the organization, not the team, but the organization waning in previous years. And uh, I I think I don't want my not top tier enthusiasm to affect other people is is not the main reason. But I, I think that is a contributing reason because I want everyone to love the Cubs maximum. Um, I don't I, specifically, I don't love the organization right now. And I haven't for the last few years, I think they're on the upswing. Yes. But uh, I think the ambition of this team over the last several years has been a crime, not the, not of the players of the, of the front office of the ownership. I think the ambition doesn't match what the, what the ambition of the Chicago Cubs should ever be. Mm -hmm. And I guess we only have so many hours in our lives. And I, 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 I think it's good for me to step away from uh, a weekly involvement in this way, I think, uh, hmm. because of that. And I can't, I, I can't wait for me to fall fully in love again. Uh, yeah, uh, when come I... back like Jordan wearing the four five. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, I'll, I'll say, you know, you guys have heard plenty of my complaints and stuff. Uh, but I think that's it. I want, I like, I want to be, I want to be happy about it, and I want everyone to be happy about it. Um, but yeah, uh, I think, I think I, I'm, I'm at the end of a chapter. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, it's like, um, I don't know that I've gotten quite there. I feel like <clears throat> you and Ken maybe are more down on the organization than Agreed. I am. Not because I like, don't feel the same way about, about it as you guys do. I, I don't even know how to, it might just be like a disposition thing. Like I, maybe I'm just I, d- detaching myself from it or. I don't think it's detached uh, for you or anything. I think it's just everyone experiences things in, in their own ways and there's different flavors of fandom and there's different flavors of, of that. And I like, I love your optimism and enthusiasm and I'm my enthusiasm. Like I, I love the players on this team and we're going to talk about our favorite yeah. play, players of this, this era. Like that isn't, that isn't changing for me. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I like I I appreciate and enjoy how you've you know season previews. I think if you do the metrics, I think your average <laughs> win prediction is a little ahead of yeah. mine usually, yeah. you know. And I love that. Right. Yeah, and I think the other the other component of it in terms of why we're we're stopping now is like there was a time where even in the off season we would try to hold ourselves to like a. Uh, once a week Mm -hmm. podcast sometimes about almost nothing if there wasn't a lot to talk about but i think you know it's like anything where when you start to feel yourself being less excited about something or let or like seeking it out less or like we i think we only did maybe two or three podcasts the whole off season to me it's like you got to trust yourself and trust like the energy that you're putting out about like oh maybe maybe this represents that this is like kind of winding down and i also think that you and i both have a lot going on and a lot of other things that we do. And we're like, you know, to anybody who (laughs) is dumb enough to think that the life of a comedian is like fucking off all day and then like working once a night 
Like, it's just not that. It's really not. And it's very it's... full-time. We can have the Cubs yeah. game in the background, but we're not working less than 40 hours a week. Like, that's not... Right. It, it sounds fun. Yeah, I'm getting paid for three hours a week, but I'm right. working more, <laughs> right. more than... Right. And the pay hours. for those three hours, the rate's amazing. But it's Sometimes just it it's great, just, yeah. it's just a bizarre way to make a living. But yeah. I think, I think the, the greater point is, like, you know, if, let's say, the Cooligans, uh, the podcast I referenced earlier, like, was the <clears> goal... That would take a huge amount of effort from us. So like that right. would take money, that would take time, that would take like, hey, we got to put up clips all the time and we got to get like a nice camera set up. And we like the amount of time and effort it would take for us to try to make this what we would want it to be in a way that we could actually like monetize and have as part of our kind of portfolios of how we make yeah. a career doing this. I don't know. I don't think that either of us have ever been like committed to spending that level of time on it. No, and uh, I think we're and both that's part a- of it for me too. Totally. I think we're at stages in our life where I want to give what I'm doing a plus or I want to give it nothing. And I'm not giving a plus. Also, yeah. the team has sort of told us how much to care in the off season. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. they have. And yeah. it's not just us, right? It's reflected in a few things. Like the Onto Waveland podcast was discontinued by The Athletic. And that that was a yeah. podcast with, you know, Brett Taylor, Sahadev, Mooney. And that was a podcast I listened to. And part of it is because capitalism is bad. And there's, you know, they're just chopping off the things because they can, uh, the athletic and the New York times organization and all that stuff. Um, but also like the, the, the ambition of the team has not been what it was in other years. So it's not just us yeah. not talking about stuff in the off season. We were a little less motivated, but I think the team told us to be, mm-hmm. you know, the organization told us where the ambition was, you know, and that doesn't mean it's not a good organization. I think it's a good organization. I just, uh, I just have higher expectations and I, I, there, there's still other podcasts out there you can listen to. But as I'm saying this, it's like, we're not the only ones to, to fall off. The athletic podcast went away uh, at Cub Prospects is still writing sporadically about the Cubs, but he's moved on to other stuff. And he's just like one of the best writers uh, in prospect world there is at Cub Prospects. Mm-hmm. Still follow a friend of the show, Brian Smith. Um, you know, Sarah Sanchez is still doing her podcast. That's great. Uh, you know, Corey and Brendan have moved in with the CHGO team. I mainly mm-hmm. listen to the episodes. That's them. But um, yeah, it's just a different landscape than it was uh, mm-hmm. a few years ago. Yeah, I mean, I feel like when we started it, podcasting like was not did not occupy the space that it does now in most mm-hmm. people's lives. You know, right? Um, yeah. So I think uh, you know, I think that's I think that's the that's the answer to, to that question, yeah. more or less, right? It is. It is. All right. Um, so let's. Uh, you want to talk? You want to talk favorite moments from our era, Adam? Favorite moments? Favorite? Do you want to yeah. start with favorite game? Sure. So I've got a couple in mind. Now, are we talking like game in general, a game that we attended or both? Either. Yeah. So I think for me, some of my favorite games just in general, I mean, the David Bodie game is very much up there. The 2018 2018 uh, walk-off Grammy. Ultimate Grand Slam walk-off. And that's also one of those where, unfortunately, I was not watching it live, but I do remember exactly where I was. I was like in a car going from San Francisco to Santa Cruz for some random one nighter when I was out there for a, uh, a comedy festival. Um, and I remember it was one of those where like, I didn't know the guy driving well enough to be like, I'm going to put this Cubs game on <laughs> my phone and uh, it's not rude, but I was right. following it on game day. And it was one of those where I like, I refreshed it and all of a sudden it's like four, three final. And I was like, I'm, did that just, am I looking at this pro- Like, did that actually just happen? And then just watching that highlight, you know, 50 times that night. It's funny that that very similar for me. I was not watching live because my wife and I were, we have two, we celebrate, we celebrate an anniversary and we celebrate a couch anniversary. And our couch anniversary is the first time stuff happened where we went. (laughs) So we get, uh, we both got drunk on tequila. We were good friends at the time. And uh, we, so now we celebrate our couch anniversary by getting drunk on tequila together every year. And that's what we were doing that day. We were coming back from, uh, from the Mexican restaurant restaurant and I checked my yeah. phone at our doorstep and it went 3-0 to 4-3 and I was like holy shit drunk on tequila out with my yeah. wife and it was a uh, yeah it was a, a funny way to to yeah. come across the Bodie highlight I also have a very fond memory of I I believe it would have been early 2019 that insane Cubs comeback against the Braves in the pouring rain at Wrigley. Yes. I was at my brother Patrick's bachelor party in Austin, Texas, watching that on my phone. Yes. Yeah. 
They were down. I mean, it, I think they were down like, you know, 12 to three or something like that's that. That's a great one. I forgot about that yeah. one. That's a really, that's so a really that, good one. That one is definitely up there. Uh, I mean, the Alec Mills no hitter for sure is, mm-hmm. is up there for me. Um, the Christopher Morrell walk off last year and the Talkman robbery. Last, very yes. Much up there. Last year in um, two all time moments. That's a thing where if yeah. the team makes the playoffs, those moments are heightened sure. even more. But yes. Yeah, and the Bodie one is kind of the same. Where like, if the Cubs go on a run in 2018, like that would have been the moment because that was in August. Mm-hmm. So that I think that would have been the moment where you're like, oh, that's when we knew this team was special. And it's always easy to like go back and reframe those. And there's plenty of those in 2016. You know, the comeback against the Mariners, the the John Lester bunt game, and and all totally. those things that or the Javi Mother's Day walk off. That we had a lot oh, of those that year. So fun. So, but since since we started the podcast, I mean, a highlight for me in terms of in person was that that first year that we did the podcast, I got to go down to D.C. for the Home Run Derby and All-Star Game. And it just so happened that Schwarber and Javi were in that Home Run Derby. They both put on a great show. Arguably, Schwarber got robbed by his future teammate, I mean, Bryce Harper. by the rules, he, he, he Schwarber should have a, yeah, a Home yeah. Run Derby win, yes. And then Wilson Contreras hit a home run in the All-Star Game in his first pitch that he ever saw in an All-Star Game. So, Wilson loves doing that on a first yeah. on a first at-bat, first and pitch, doesn't the, he? The icing on the cake during that game was when the Josh Hader being an asshole news broke. <laughs> and that was really fun. White Power Josh came out. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. so funny. God, it's that is one of the beautiful things about baseball, man. The way you can talk through memories of baseball and things that happened mm-hmm. and how it ties into what was happening in your life and what it, it ties right. into like where you were physically when you heard things, yeah. when you saw things is so fun. And the the revisionist history, as you say, about if the mm-hmm. season ends up great, this was the moment things turned around. And of course, that's not necessarily an objective ca- causation thing thing you know right. causation correlation situation it's just like it, it, baseball's mm-hmm. poetry in that way it's it, it's yeah. open to interpretation and and i love all that i think my favorite in-person game during this era was it's funny how many of our favorites are like immediately after we started the podcast and then we did yeah. it for five yeah. more years yeah. Yeah. um but the uh the it was july 26 2018 i was at a baseball game with my wife jamie and with our friend ken schultz the uh, the third man of this podcast we don't have ken clips on this show even though this show is like ken is the the third beetle of this Absolutely. show he is the, the george harrison uh of uh of this show and i i love the season preview the final season preview we did is with justin steel ringo week. did we just do that to him steel might yes yeah, steel steel might be ringo by appearances i wonder who's ringo by appearances it might be brian smith <laughs> it might be, it be it's, it it's, be. it's it's or sarah sanchez maybe uh but yeah either way great ringos all around but myself ken and uh and Jamie were at the Cubs Diamondbacks game on July 26, 2018, in person. David Bodie ties it up uh, off of Reef Oh, I was Reef watching Cub. that game. And Brad Boxberger launches. Rizzo walks it off with a no doubter to write yeah. that watching the TV feed, because that's one of those games where I'm at it in person. We're going nuts when Bodie hits it. And then immediately Rizzo makes us not wait and walks it off. And we're all jumping around going nuts. That's one of those games you get home and you're like, I want to see the TV call of this too. And yeah. should be one day Hall of Famer JD, Jim Deshays, immediately as Rizzo settles in, he says something like, end it right here, Anthony. Like he's yeah. just like, let's go. And, and immediately it happens in such a beautiful way. So I think as far as like a single single game that's probably my favorite Mm -hmm. from this era obviously i was at the uh the games to to Mm -hmm. the brewers and rockies games as we mentioned which is on the other side of that coin uh and then as far as like moments go i love that we were at in here in uh in queens this is like it wasn't the most impactful moment but it was sort of representative of my favorite era of, of cubs where we watched Javi Baez steal home at City mm-hmm. Field on some weirdness, you know, where they mm-hmm. threw, try to pick off at first. Javi took home right in front of us, and we were there together at that game. And uh, just the the magic of what was the Javi era was was on full display. Yeah. I was also at a, a before the extra or the Ghost Runner rule at a I want to say it was a fourteen inning Cubs win at uh, City Field where Luke Farrell got the win. Yes. 
There's a name for you. Oh, I, I remember, yeah. I, I, I was at a Menzingers concert at the Knitting Factory that mm. evening. Yes. And I remember that Elizabeth Moss, the actress, who's apparently a big Cubs fan, uh, I think also a Scientologist, so that's not great. But uh, Hey, Elizabeth two Moss, questionable organizations. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, and both cult-like. Um, yeah, t bad leadership, but with a lot of talent, you gotta yeah. say, you know. But I was particularly impressed because she was there all 14 innings. Like, I kept looking over, like, there's no way Elizabeth Moss is here. No, she was there in her seat. She's a legit <laughs> fan, man. She's been she's been riding with it for uh, forever. Uh, also, yeah. I like that you, just speaking of famous Cubs fans, I like that we were talking about, like, the people who are uh, comedians who love the Cubs. Uh, Jeff Garland didn't come up. Uh, so. <laughs> Dude, I love Curbs so much and yeah. i've been trying to listen to they're doing like a curb re rewatch podcast the same way that there's like office ladies sure man he is i've never heard someone interrupt a co-host more in my life well and if it makes Brutal. people feel better while we talk shit about jeff garland being uh, a, a drip and a, a sort of obnoxiously unfunny and anything except curb on which he's very good uh when a good friend of mine was a writer on the goldbergs and uh he's he's the uh, worst human being she's ever worked with she said there just you go. Gr gross i mean he had to be fired because of how gross he was to women and stuff so fuck that guy uh it checks yeah. out i've uh, got <laughs> my inside source tells me he's a real piece of shit so don't feel bad I... about it. Yeah, I will say also, you know, talking about how much it's the same way as like, you know, you hear a song from 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and it immediately places you in like, what was I doing at that time in my life? Right. Like there, there are songs 100%. I hear where I'm like, yo, junior prom. And like, I'll just always know that for some reason. Um, and the and the Cubs are that way for me as well, where like I've been a fan for essentially my almost my entire like conscious life, really. And I can mark all these different times with like, you know, when 2003, when all that happened, like, what was that like for me? Where was I at that time? And in over the time of this podcast, like my life has changed fairly dramatically, like, yes, arguably more than yours, certainly at least like personal life wise. And in terms of the, uh, my tax marital status. <laughs> yeah. That, that, yeah. That's yeah. changed and, less for me. You yeah. Know, that was, that was an interesting thing where like, during that time, so I, I got separated in like the summer of 2019. And then, um, you know, it's, it's for all intents and purposes, I was like, you know, separated um, and divorced, like, like mid mid summer, basically. And we didn't I like talk about it on the podcast. Obviously, you were aware of it. Like we had that trip to St. Louis, you you me and Ken where the Cubs got swept, of course. Um, <laughs> and that was like when I was in in the thick of it. But like, some of my happiest in-person memories are I went out to Chicago just for a weekend on like, it was like Labor Day weekend of 2019, saw a couple of Cubs games. And then Ken and I went to a game that was Ben Zobris first game back. And I felt this like kinship with Zobris because I knew that like he was going through some shit at that time, uh, arguably worse than me, given what we know about that. Um, but I bet that there, I bet the, that, yeah, right. There, yeah. <laughs> there's sound rumored to be something very different, but vibes wise, I bet kind of a match. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But Ken and I got to be there. We watched the Cubs Mariners game in in September of nineteen, where it was Zobra's first game back. Wilson Contreras hit a home run. Cubs won. Like vibes were just great. And and at that time, like it seemed very much like the Cubs were gonna make a playoff run. And other than the trade deadline of 2021, the Cubs falling apart the last week of 2019, I think hurt more than anything over this time because like I personally at that time, like really could have used a Cubs playoff run. And it was like, yeah, just add it to the fucking list. Of course, like this thing that I care about that is like one of the only constants and good things that I like is also going to go to shit. So cool. It's amazing the weight that sports can carry, you know, oh my God. and, and yeah. it, that's, that's why it's beautiful too. And that's mm -hmm. why it is because it wouldn't mean everything if it went well every time, you know, sure. like it wouldn't, it, but that, <laughs> that makes it hurt so much more when mm -hmm. things go the way they some you know they've gone frequently i guess at the ends yeah. of uh, uh of recent years, but why admit why we, we hang in there and, and, you know, believe in what might, what might come again you know yeah i'm, I'm referencing uh, a league of their own because I, I watched it recently for the first time in in many years and there's a great exchange where as gina davis is leaving she says like it just got too hard and then tom hanks's character says like it's supposed to be hard the hardest what makes it worth doing or something like you know if it wasn't hard everybody would do it right
Yeah, and that's great. baseball, and that's also life, and that I think that's why people love that sport so much. Hundred percent. Also, you saying uh, the just talking about Zobris reminds me in terms of favorite moments of our run. Zobris striking out Yadi Molina to end that year after Zobris mm -hmm. came back after everything he went through, and then just before he retires, gets on the mound and mm -hmm. fucking strikes out Yadi yeah. Molina. Oh my God! What fun! I mean, fun. we've got Zoe striking out Molina and Rizzo striking yep. out Freddie Freeman. Like, what more could you want? Just Frederick? such <laughs> Frederick. <laughs> such fun, man! And even in the years without playoff wins, you, you can have those highs that are just like that do keep you smiling, even when stuff mm -hmm. in your life is fucking bad. Like it's been, it's amazing, and it's great that the Cubs can still give us that in years that don't win. And God, who is you know historically who is more practiced at finding joy in something that doesn't end well than this fan base? You know, historically yeah. uh, among the greatest of all time. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Brewers have never had it go well, and I'll never stop uh, reminding them that that's the case. Uh, so maybe they have us beat uh, that way now that they have not. They've never won. Never. In... Shout out to Cato Kalen. <laughs> Shout out Cato. First we've referenced Martin. many times. So <laughs> yeah, he's our Ringo now. Uh, <laughs> uh, also, uh, the Schwarber home run we saw in person. That's one of the longest homers I ever saw. Uh, that and hit the it to the seafood place. place. You were in a different place, but I was sitting with Ken behind home plate like on the third base side and you had a perfect you had a perfect view of like the ball going onto that walkway or the bridge or whatever it i mean 475 feet or something i mean like it's that. it's, it's one of the couple longest i've i've ever seen in my life uh other so than was... you and ken being there to see cespedes hit the ball into the third deck at city field which was as as no doubt a homer as quick and no doubt homer as i've ever seen in my life was that disgusting cespedes to left field one um i sat down and my hand just went up immediately and waved at it once and uh, but still not as long as that Schwarber bomb. So uh, yeah. that's that's fun. Uh, can I tell you a favorite moment of mine that is off the field from our podcast run? Uh, when you sure. went to Randy Rosario's house in the Dominican Republic. Oh, my God. Insane. Do you remember? Of course I remember. <laughs> yeah, I had forgotten that happened. And I was like, oh, yeah, I was looking through the titles of our podcast episodes, all, almost 300 of them. I was like, oh, yeah, Adam went to Randy Rosario's Dominican house. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it turns out that it was, it's a really cool story. It also for sure could have been the end of the podcast a few years ago when my organs were all taken out of my body and sold on the <laughs> black market. Yeah, could have I, did, I did go off of a resort in the DR and just trusted some guy who worked there to be like, I'm going to take you to... The, the reason I believed it was that it was Randy fucking Rosario. Like, if he was like, my cousin is David Ortiz, I'd be like, oh, I'm getting murdered for sure. hundred percent, yeah. But who's going to pull Randy Rosario out of there? Exactly. Place? David Ortiz gets shot when people don't even know it's him out there. So That's it's, yeah... It, Exactly. That, that if it's almost like if you're swindling me with Randy <clears throat> Rosario, I feel so seen that I'll let it happen. Honestly, I'm impressed. Honestly, yeah, I'd have to respect the commitment to the to the swindle. But no, yeah, yeah. I, I was on a trip to the to the DR and and I met a guy who. <laughs> I start talking about baseball as I do with everyone, but especially people in the DR who also love it as much as we do. And he's like, oh yeah, my cousin's Randy Rosario. You know Randy Rosario? I was like, I'm a Cubs fan. Of course I know Randy Rosario. And he like, it would, the whole thing was very shady. He's like, I can't drive you, but like, I'm going to get in my car. You get a taxi. You're going to follow me. It was, it was an amazing day. And Randy Rosario was like on his way out of his house. Like he was going somewhere, but he, had no idea who I was and was just like, want to see my house? I was like, okay. And he just like shows me around his <laughs> kind of mansion, really, despite yeah. the fact that like he never made that much money as a big leaguer, but your money goes pretty far in the DR. And he had this like beautiful place. He showed me around. He's like, yeah, this is my ball from my first save. And, and I'm also referencing like, because I think his first save was in that crazy game where the Cubs were like, in DC and Pedro Strope got hurt running the bases. And it was got just it. like this whole chaotic thing but yeah he was he also shared with me that he preferred how caratini caught him over wilson so okay you know yeah what are you gonna do well that's but yeah, uh, yeah. An, an insane an insane thing to like be in another country and have the cubs relief pitcher randy rosario being like come on in yeah, and the fact that it didn't end up away games Dateline is uh, exactly. is like a nice, uh, you know, is a nice thing. It's also just weird because, like, who invites a stranger to just see their house ever? Like, forget baseball right. player-wise. That's just not a thing people do. So that Dominican was... Dominican people are a very welcoming people. Sounds like it. And uh, you mentioning Strope, I remember you, t uh, you told, like, a cool story from that, that, like, Strope 
gave him like financial advice and uh mm -hmm. you know and basically was like you know don't spend the money right away on like a car that's not what you yeah. do you know like if you need a car i'll buy you a car you know <laughs> and just like what a fucking guy pedro strobe one of my favorite players of uh of of that era too the best yeah um let's do uh, before we do uh, pick a favorite player uh from this from this run why don't we do let's do another clip um let's do you you know what one of our here's a favorite player this is a three minute long clip but uh this is one you mentioned where uh rob zestrisny of all people oh, uh, how best. great was the rob zestrisny i episode? think he interviewed us he did he literally i don't think i included in this clip yet but uh but if if we're telling you the most re-listenable episodes we have like go listen to the rob zestrisny episode just a charming guy great follow online too and uh, he literally did ask, he's like, what were you guys experiencing during the World Series time? But this is Rob Zestrisny's uh, experience of the World Series. Three minute clip, so go get a drink if you want, uh, you know, well, with your headphones in. It was almost like 3-1, it was like, what else we got to lose? Right. Like, it doesn't matter anymore. Like, yeah. we're gonna go out there and Rizzo was playing Rocky in the clubhouse and like, he changed his walkout to the Rocky theme, which I thought was hilarious. If you think about us doing that at the time, you're like, these kids don't care about anything. Like, mm -hmm. There's so much riding on this, and they're watching Rocky before the game. I, I remember right before the series, we beat the Dodgers. I was still on the roster until Schwarber was clear, until uh, game one, where I got a phone call in the morning. I actually did an interview with Brad Lidge, and he was like, hey, you're still on the roster. Like, you look looking forward to pitching. I was like, yeah, it'd be a dream come true. And then after, as soon as I hung up the phone, I was like, what an interview. And then – I got a call, and they're like, hey, you're off the roster. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, we were going through it, and I remember Albert Amora had uh, the best quote that I'll never forget in life. And I love Albert. He's, he, he's one of my better friends in the whole world. But when they hit the homer to go uh, to tie the game in the eighth, is the eighth, right? Yeah. See, it's all blurred to me right now. I don't know what <laughs> yeah. it was. Uh, the eighth inning, and uh, he turned, and he goes, maybe this curse thing is real. <laughs> like, essentially, it was a Rajay, Rajay Davis choked up halfway up the bat. Like the last thing we thought he was going to do was hit a homer. Right. Like we we're like he might pound one through the four hole or do something like that. And he just somehow lifts one out to left. And he looks at me and he's like, "That should not have happened. Maybe yeah. this first thing is real." And I remember thinking to myself, like, as soon as the rain delayed, like everyone go to the clubhouse. I was like, I don't know if I can make it back that far. Like, I don't know just physically, I yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but I assume, were you were you there during the rain delay? Yeah. That was taking the most demoralized group of people on the entire planet that probably in the entire world, like for that minute to two minutes after that happened, it, you know, they say, oh, the energy was sucked out of the stadium. And you're like, okay, there's still energy. Like it was literally sucked out of the dugout. Like I'm grasping for energy somewhere and it's gone. Yeah. And he took the team and he was like, we're, it's a brand new ball game. We're, we're still in game seven. And it's tie ball game. It was like, we have better arms than they do. We have better bats than they do. We have better coaches than they do. There's no reason we should lose this game. And as soon as he said that, I was like, that's a great point. Like, not taking anything away from them. They were great. But you can't say, of course. ooh, they're really good. We might not want to play. So he, so he was like, hey, we are better than they are. Let's go beat them. And thankfully for us, Schwarber was leading off. Yeah. And so it was like he was – Riding that miracle, like I think he was batting 500 at the time, and Crazy. had seen a pitch all season. I think he took live VP off guys like me, and now he's facing Corey Kluber. So it just doesn't make sense that he should be like that. And he hits he a single, and I'm sitting there, and I'm like, okay, there is no curse. Like Schwarber's hitting single on a torn ACL. There is no curse. We got this. Then I don't know we won the game, but yeah, my perspective of that whole thing was like, I don't remember any time that I wasn't in the game, like pre-game, at home, sleeping, going home from the game. I don't remember a thing, but I remember my feelings through that nine innings. And then it's so draining that I, I literally slept, walk home, slept, walk to the field, and then started playing again. So That guy's got a ring, and he's talking about it. It's just like hearing a fan who won a contest to, to, to be there, you know? Yeah. Well, you, I, I, it's something I think about with him a lot where, like, you know, his time with the Cubs was pretty limited. Um, he's still uh, – is he on a big league roster right now? I know he was with the Pirates last year. I yeah. think he is. He's at least – yeah, he might be in AAA. Yeah, he's a journeyman. Yeah. He's, he's bounced around. And, like, I have no doubt that many years from now when he's done playing and he can really reflect on that, it's be like, man, how fucking lucky was I to just happen to be on that team that year and be in that dugout? Like, 
it's unbelievable. Yeah. And it, the, to hear him talk about that speech, and it's really one of the only times I can remember someone sharing that much information about what was actually said in there. Like, I feel like people referenced it immediately. And, and even the night that the Cubs won the World Series, there was reference to like, you know, hey, we know there's a players only meeting and Jason Hayward spoke, but um, it's, yeah, it, it like there are only so many people who are in that room, the, the room where it happened, if you will. And, <laughs> if you want to bust a historical rhyme about it, yeah. yeah. I mean... Just yeah, and an, an incredibly cool, cool thing, and yeah, it's it's fun. It's fun to listen back to that. Yeah, he's uh, it, and the, he goes into way deeper stuff. He was with us for like an hour, so he was uh, he was uh, a great great guest to have. Um, you know who's a great guest who I, I hadn't thought about? Duncan Robinson, excellent I, guest. Just as you said, just as we were saying that, I was like, I forgot we had Duncan Robinson, who was a really good uh, minor league pitcher. And yeah. also similar vibes to Zestrisny because it was sort of like he was interviewing us a little bit too, and he mm -hmm. was just like so generous with his time. But yeah, Duncan Robinson was a was was a great uh, a great guest too. Like we've we've had some yeah. really fun guests, and it's interesting in this era now. I, like who knows why players say yes to interview requests from whoever, but like I don't know. Ten years ago, I didn't think it was possible to just you know. <laughs> dm dudes and tweet at them right and they're like yeah sure and they come on and now you know you follow each other on social media and um it's it's such an interesting uh such an interesting thing i'll, I'll still hit up I, I haven't done it in a while but when i was doing immaculate grid i would still uh dm just is this isn't he every every now and again when it came up that he was on the on the grid he was always very <laughs> excited about it yeah, he's great. Uh, follow that guy if you don't. He's a guy who, like, also, he, he could probably, he could be a broadcaster if he wants to when it's done. He pitched in uh, 21 games with Pittsburgh last year, so I think he's, a, you know, he's still still going uh, still going pretty strong. And, uh, and yeah, had, like, a pretty successful, a pretty successful year last year. Um, you know, uh, uh, fielding independent pitching uh, 4.32. That's major league. He, that's hanging in there. Um, yeah. So, Adam, do you want to do you want to hit us with as exhaustive a list uh, as you can, uh, as far as guests go, as, yeah, as a I mean, thank you to as many guests as we've got? Yeah. So, in terms of players, and these are people that we had on when they were in the minors, some of whom are now in the majors. Uh, obviously, Justin Seal, who we had on three times, the Three Timers Club. Yeah, um, <laughs> give him a jacket. Brennan Davis on, who was impressive. He was impressive in how not fun he was. And I don't mean that as a dig, but like he was just very serious and businesslike. Yeah. And after that interview, I was like, this guy's going to be a fucking star. And I hope yeah. he still is. But yes. He just had that approach where I was like, how was this guy only like 20 years old? Like, yeah. Brennan not... was 20 at the time. Yeah. Yeah. And then the Davis Club, Taylor Davis was a fun guest we had on the oh, show as well. The best. Taylor was. And that great. is one of that is one of my favorite moments. Talk about a favorite moment from mm -hmm. this time that we've been doing this, the Taylor Davis Grand Slam, mm -hmm. just an in, incredible moment for that guy who like, you know, was someone who was mostly like a, a 4A sort of guy. And again, it's not like a dig on him. It's just kind of how things were, where he was, he was up and down a lot. And to have that, you come up and in a packed Wrigley Field in a game against the Cardinals, you're not there for that long and you hit a no doubt Grand Slam like, he when he talked to us about it and i don't know if we have the clip and it's fine if we don't but like he's he described it as like floating around the bases and i'm sure that it was that it was like that so yeah taylor davis was great we had duncan robinson we had dj hers mm -hmm. who uh obviously was has now since been been traded away from the cubs um big leaguers just during 2020 we had alec mills we had kyle farnsworth who talked to us about the fight and that was crazy like my internet was <laughs> fucking up you were talking to him we kept trying to connect with him he's like literally in between deadlifts at the fucking he's a gigantic man yeah um, uh, it was sort of like believe the hype when it comes to whatever you thought about kyle farnsworth yep, yeah yeah you, exactly you're right you think. Yeah. yeah um we had john Lieberon, which was mm -hmm. really really cool um joe madden i think as i mentioned before was uh was the the pinnacle in terms of non uh, baseball player guests. We, Roy Wood Jr. certainly comes to mind. Sarah Spain, the fantastic reporter. Mm -hmm. Sarah um, Spain was a great episode. Huge, yeah. huge Cubs fan. We've had Sarah Spain on. 
uh, from Cubs world. You mentioned before we've had Brian Smith, we've had Sandra Marchetti, we've had Sarah Sanchez, Greg um, Us, Ken Ken Schultz, many many times. Ken Schultz, I almost don't mention because I do consider him like a the third. He's the host. I know. Yeah, it was like the Ken like, finale was last week. You know how at the end of a series sometimes like a main character gets their own episode, the second to last kind of a situation. Absolutely, and yeah. a, a, a Lenny Harris esque pinch pinch podcaster. <laughs> yeah, hit every time, man. So um, yeah, that's that's the the list as I as I know it to be. If 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 I forgot anyone there, you can you can let me know. But yeah, it's been it's been very fun. And and again, I, I'm sure we're gonna have. Do we have more? Uh, we have Madden clips. Yeah, we have like uh, we have a, we've got a couple more clips. If you've got a couple minutes, I mean, we're this is the last one, so I can. Uh, you want to just play some fun clips we have and yeah, uh, let's, listen to some stuff. Before we do that, um, favorite players of this. Of we'll do time. favorite players. Let's do favorite players clip. And then we'll do another couple clips and then, uh, yeah. Uh, so for me, uh, let's, well, let, let me play this quick uh, Justin Steele clip. It just, it's just fun. Uh, and then we'll do favorite players. Now, I assume like any other baseball player, you didn't uh, exclusively pitch your entire life. So I'm curious, what other positions did you play growing up? And uh, I guess my main question is, can Justin Steele rake? Uh, I like to think I can rake. I actually, <laughs> I hit just about every single day with uh, Ethan Hearn in the cages. And uh, the h hardest I've hit one off the bat this off season was 102, and the furthest I've hit one was 430. Man. Okay. And, and that's on that's on that's on hit tracks and track man. So it's legit. And, <laughs> Are you bat uh, you bat lefty or righty? Lefty, strictly nice. pull hitter. <laughs> oh yeah i mean especially if you're coming in as a pitcher I, i've thought about that too where it's like you gotta sell out i mean i'm not oh yeah i'm airing it out i'm gonna yeah. swing hard in case i do hit it <laughs> absolutely you do you're not going up there trying to be tony Gwynn finding the 5.5 hole that's like no, let's I'm let's not find, trying to do that <laughs> no go 430 and pimp it and mm -hmm. <laughs> do you have a, is that like uh lester <laughs> lester's home runs always seem to go like left center i'm very impressed by the uh he the has like a really he has like a really smooth golf swing like with his batting swing you know yeah. he like just drops the head down i like his swing mine's a lot more violent than that <laughs> <laughs> buggy, buggy whip. <laughs> yeah, it's more like Baez if I had to compare it. Not oh. like Baez, but it's pretty violent. <laughs> sure. Oh, I love and, that. <laughs> are you are you willing to commit to us right now on this podcast <laughs> that if you hit a home run in the big leagues, you will pimp it? Oh yeah, no doubt. If I know it's gone, because uh, like if I don't know it's gone, I'm trying to get three. Like I'm going head first in the third. Oh yeah. Now. <laughs> if you hit a, if you hit a four thirty, I think you got to carry your bat yeah. to first, like Juan Soto. Yeah. If I if I hit it four thirty, I'm gonna take a good gander at it, admire it, and, <laughs> and I'll get my trot going around the bases. And I'd like to think he did pimp the single he hit off Corbin Burns. Uh, he he did get. I mean, a if hit. you're gonna get a hit off of someone, that's pretty cool. Also, uh, as as you mentioned, Ethan Hearns. I'm remembering that we spoke to Ethan Roberts, who was a lovely guy. And share yes. some really like heartwarming stories of a connection that he had with a fan. So that's a that's a fun one too. Really great dude in terms of current Cubs. Ethan Roberts still working his way back from I think it was Tommy John, and uh, he's still in the organization. So we'd love to see him come up and uh, be closing, and uh, or just in the bullpen at some point. Uh, but yeah, we wanted to talk uh, favorite players of this era and. Could say part of the reason, you know, why why maybe not around anymore. When I think of my favorite players of this era, uh, I'm thinking of a Yankee and a Cardinal. You know, I'm thinking of uh, an Anthony. Iraqi. Yeah, exactly, an Iraqi. Uh, so that's some of them. But I'm gonna say Kyle Hendricks. It, the mm -hmm. I don't want to take for granted Kyle Hendricks. How much he's been, like right at the top of my favorite Cubs pitchers of all time. Yeah. You know, uh, I I think he's criminally underappreciated maybe the best player in the major leagues to never make an all-star team mm -hmm. and i don't want to be part of the crim criminally underrating or underappreciating kyle hendricks gang and i'm just happy to see him take the mound every time he does i've loved every minute he's been with the cubs and yeah. uh if we're gonna say through the away games era because who knows i mean i think if you're a betting person you would bet this is probably the last kyle hendricks year with the cubs i hope it's mm -hmm. not but there's a good chance that the kyle hendricks era sort of mirrors the era we've been talking about uh yeah. so i think if i'm gonna if i'm gonna say one for the era i i would say kyle how about you yeah i mean for me for me it's rizzo and i i think yeah. of um there are two particular moments in 2021 that i really remember distinctly before um before it all went to shit at the trade deadline the first one being it was the first game back at a full capacity wrigley 
Cubs Cardinals on a Friday afternoon. Rizzo has like a 16 pitch at bat that culminates yes. in a home run. And like one of just a, a phenomenal moment at a time where it was the first time in two years that there had been a packed crowd for a baseball game at Wrigley or, or anywhere um, other than maybe Texas, who was packed on opening day. But um, <laughs> sure, they, ain't real. then also the, the Javi sack fly walk off against Amir oh. Garrett. Oh, nothing oh, better. Sweep it. Sweep rowing, it up. Rowing the boat, but. I think Rizzo, of like the people who've been there for a long time, has been my favorite. I've gotten a lot more fond of Ian Happ just through listening to the podcast. Like, I think if you don't listen to the podcast, you just think he's very like workmanlike and kind of boring. But I think he's actually like sneaky, pretty funny. One hundred percent, he smart is. Guy. Yeah, uh, and I think he will have a very, very strong career in broadcasting if he chooses to go into that after his career is over. And he, I think the the podcast is a good way to set himself up for that. In terms of someone who I love the most, even though they were only there for a short time. The year ended shittily, but man, right. the Nicholas Castellanos summer was so, so fun. I had him written down as like favorite short-term cub of this era. Yeah, well, uh, the Nick Castellanos, it, it's sort of a, a peek into a, an alternate future, alternate history. What if Castellanos had had remained right. a cub? Because that guy loved playing mm -hmm. here. He loved playing at Wrigley. He and Javi, I think similarly, are dudes who just needed that energy. Like they just aren't as good if they're not in playing in front of that energy. Yeah, and look, if if Javi had stayed in Chicago, who knows how he would Impossible have played? To say. I yeah. yeah, maybe he also would have struggled there. But I completely agree with you. I think like kind of wasting away in Detroit, or even like Chris Bryant, it's been more health issues. But like, it makes me sad to see him on such a shit team. Like it, it bumps me out. Same. Yeah, he's got a lot of money to do it, which is great. But yeah, um, and you know, I. <laughs> I, I, Anthony Rizzo is my favorite cub. Like, j yeah. full stop. If I'm pick, it, it, that's my favorite cub. You know, uh, on certainly on the, on the hitting side, Andre Dawson was my first favorite player. So he's sort of right there, and then probably Kerry Wood as a as a pitcher. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think you can't go wrong with Rizzo. You mentioning that the um, just yeah, how many elements outside of just the baseball it was with Rizzo? You know, mm -hmm. like. The Roberto Clemente Man of the Year well learned how much he does for kids going through, you know, dealing with cancer, which Rizzo overcame. And then the dramatic moments that he always, he, I mean, we heard it in the Rob Zestrisny clip that Rizzo was playing Rocky music in, mm -hmm. in the, you know, in the locker room and getting people jacked and being, you know, in that sort of yeah. fun way. He knows this is entertainment. He wasn't mm -hmm. afraid of fucking anything. It's We're magic. Not, yeah, it's magic. It's, it's magic. The the hands on the helmet, the oh my god, the you know, the the trying to fight Aroldis Chapman and yeah. everyone in the in the Reds dugout before <clears throat> the golden era started. Yeah. Him uh, coming back from a completely fucked foot and having them play the Undertaker's music as he went to the uh you know, the Yeah, the, the Willis the, Reed the dead man. I mean, his foot yes. was black, it was so bruised. Yeah, like all all of that how many magical moments that guy brought. And that it makes me think of Wilson Contreras and his time. And I know that's a divisive person in Cubs land. He's not divisive for me. I, the, uh, the, the leader that guy was and how, how intense he was and how much he wanted to win from his first magical home run moment up here uh, since. Yeah. Just... And you know what's awesome is that the legacy of, of that first home run is Christopher Morrell taking a deep breath. Before he hits his home run, like hundred percent, kind of teammate yeah. that Contreras was. I keep saying hundred percent because I keep I keep agreeing. Yeah, and we still see Morel do that performative mm -hmm. breath, right? You know, mm -hmm. with the clubhouse poison, Wilson Contreras somehow mm -hmm. the the most friendly man in baseball is great friends with him, and yeah. uh, and I would say I also had as a category I wrote down like you know Rizzo of course because favorite ever Kyle in terms of the whole era <clears throat> Castellanos for the temporary one and then one for here in the future my favorite is Christopher Morel like I, I, I who knows what his defensive home is going to be who knows what anything's going to be uh, but he's a guy who makes me like love watching him like I've loved watching my favorite Cubs at the best times. And he, he's here at least now looking toward the future. Right. And you're hoping the vibes wise, and we've talked about this before and sorry for the siren in the background, but he's, he's this team's Javi Baez. And I think mm -hmm. Alzali is starting to feel like this team's Pedro Strope in terms of vibes. That's a great that's a great comparison too. And Alzali is a guy, God, I who I I love at the level as I've I've loved any of the Cubs of the best times. Like that guy's so fun. 
uh, to, to watch and to follow on Twitter and just seems like such a great guy. And, uh, yeah, I think, I, I think those are, those are great dudes. Um, it's funny uh, to think of all the people that over the course of these six years we were so high on. Like, what's what's Braylon Marquez and Dylan Maples up to? I was going to say, but we we talked, I think, last week on the season preview, how we hold ourselves to, we look, we pull our own receipts up on ourselves. Uh -huh. And I feel like I've got a pretty good record over the years, better than a, better than a lot of the pros and whatever. Yeah. But I was such a Dylan Maples guy. I was all yeah. in on Maples. Well, that a lot is, of us were. I was such a fun, you fall yeah. in love with the stuff, but you don't have command. Stuff you don't crazy. Command. No. So yeah, it's a, uh, you know, but, but that's again, beauty of baseball. You, the, the stuff you think, you know, and the stuff you, you don't uh, mm -hmm. is great. Um, all right. Well that, I mean, like that's, I think that's all the, the uh, official categories we've had for, for talk yeah. topics. I, I think that's it. I think that's it. Let's, let's do a couple more clips, I guess. And then, yeah. We'll do, yeah, that. let's say, I got, I, I got two more, uh, well, let's, this is a quick Joe Madden one. Uh, we've got the book of Joe. It's out this week, and it is uh, trying not to suck at baseball and life. So first off, first question, which have you found it easier to not suck at, baseball or life? <laughs> uh, to not suck at, uh, whew, that's, a, that's a good one, right? I guess. At, Thank you. At, at life, right? I think, I mean, that's the yeah, ideal yeah. answer. I've, I've, I've sucked at baseball, right? So I hope I haven't sucked at life. Um, it's so easy to suck at baseball. For my favorite manager category, I go Joe Madden. Call me a hot take, but I, I enjoyed the Joe Madden era, I'll say. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm a Mike Quaddy guy, but you know. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that, that, that <laughs> what, what a, what a hipster take that would be. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I have. This isn't from our podcast, but I think it's fun to just have. Uh, we did play it on our podcast. Uh, I got to talk to Bob Newhart about the Cubs. Here's a, a quick Bob fucking Newhart. I always said if the Cubs ever made the World Series, I had to cancel whatever I was doing and go back. And Bill Murray has that same deal. He had that same deal with movies. Is that right? I, I, Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, I had the deal, but no one cared. <laughs> you know, like it, it basically, and no one really knew. I just had to make a call. It didn't really bother anybody. I was a, a Cubs fan. I was eight years old because I had a picture of walking with my mother on, on Addison to, to Wrigley Field. So I was eight years old. I guess I was 88 or something when the Cubs. So I, I had been a Cubs fan for 80 years. And I went through that thing with DeRocher. When when they were ahead, like and there was very little time, uh, few very few games left, and the Cubs were like eight games ahead, and they blew it. In '69, yeah, 1969, right? Is that when it was '69? I love Bob Newhart. As I went through that thing with DeRocher is a very funny way to put it, and he's like, "Was it '69? The man's lived a long time, you know." Yeah. Um, I'll play one more clip and then we'll do our, uh, our sign off. And I think this is a good clip to lead us into the sign off. This is one more Joe Madden. And this is about how he ended his era. But one thing I did want to ask you, you are, I think only the second childhood Cardinals fan that we've had on the show. Uh, but uh, that's okay. I, you obviously you've more than made up for it many, many times, mm -hmm. but this is a specific point that I had never heard this story until reading the book was uh, when you were telling the team that you were not going to be coming back where you chose to do it and specifically about a place you chose not to have your final party. And I just wondered if you could tell us about that final night. Yeah, I know it wasn't coming back. It was uh, when St. Louis is the last uh, series. And, um, I was not going to permit that ballpark to hear me say that in the clubhouse. The fact in St. That Louis. Was, that was yeah. in St. Louis, right? So I talked to VJ. VJ was the our, uh, traveling secretary, the best. And I said, listen, we need that, that outside space at the hotel Saturday night because, I, again, I don't want to talk to the guys in that particular clubhouse. I don't want those walls to hear that, those words coming out of my mouth. So we went to the um, hotel that night afterwards. It was a really cool area outside and they all showed up and I gathered them together and I probably talked for about 15 minutes, told them what was going on. And I, and I thanked them all. And I told them this is nothing to be upset about. This has been an awesome experience for me and for us. So I got that through that. And then that night after that, I don't know, five, six o'clock in the morning, <laughs> Rizzo, Johnny, Javi, they all came up to the room and just hung out. Uh, That's a good party. All night, and I, all, it was great. It was great. It was the right way to do it. 
but the walls of that ballpark was not going to hear me say I'm not coming back. I love, I love that. that. I, 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 I love that for the emotional, the emotional honesty of that moment and just the right level of, I don't know if spite's the right word, but for me it is. Uh, <laughs> is, is that, that, that ballpark does not deserve that. hear this. Yeah. No, yeah. I love that. And we're not signing off from St. Louis. God, no. If there's any Cardinals fans hate listening, turn it off. You're not going to let us, we're not going to let you hear those words. <laughs> Your friend Chris, right? Wasn't he a guest at some yeah, point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we did have him on. Chris is a great, he's, he's one of the, he's one of the good ones. One, one of the, the good ones. My friend Dusty Shekels, another one of the good ones who's, uh, who, who's listened to in the past too. But um, yeah, I mean, I th- that's the last clip I have uh, lined up here so yeah that's that's it guys thank you uh thank you so much to anyone who if you if you listen to one episode if this is for some reason the first one you're listening to i've got bad news it's too late (laughs) people listening now like that sounds like a pretty good show they had a lot of interesting people and a lot of fun moments and deep talk yeah um thank you to all of our sponsors over the years even the ones who didn't pay us Please, please, that's such a funny rundown. That's so good. I w- <laughs> name name the sponsors we had. All right. Um, shout out to Manscaped, who did give us money that did the best. not pay off. That was a terrible investment by you, and we're yeah. sorry. The but only we time we the free beat. underwear and buzzers <laughs> and a little bit of money that helped us cause, uh, cover our our hosting fees. Yes. Um, definitely not a shout out to DraftKings for nope. not paying us thirty dollars and then reaching back out to us about advertising. At which point Kevin was like fucking pay us yeah i was like well we're not going to agree to do another run of DraftKings ads until when we haven't been paid yet and they were like well but don't maybe we can get ahead of it and do the commitment and then we'll look into the money and i'm like this is i know you're a gambling website this is just stealing (laughs) well they wanted us to parlay the money that we hadn't been paid into a a bigger bet that was kind of a bonus Um, advertising campaign the small, the 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 biggest uh, fu shout out goes to Brawl Network. I don't oh, know so. if you exist anymore, but we briefly were like part of a podcast network that was run by, like you know, you never see the ads for like, the guy who's like the Liver King. Like I think it was like that guy. <laughs> That's a great cop, like a guy who had genuine like insane racist meltdowns. We were like, okay, bye, and it took days. Off I feel my life. the most guilt about that because I, it was a huge inconvenience for you. What a nightmare that was. God we, damn it. We dug out of it, but fuck that place. That was such a gross nightmare. I, I want to say there was like another weird, maybe gambling or sports related site that sponsored us for a little bit too. But Thrive Fantasy. Yeah thrive and then people were dming us like they stole my money and i was like well it's I, I believe it that's none of my business really but you know like <laughs> i believe that um god so funny so funny to be god we had sponsors over the years crazy we shit did. we did we had sponsors we had some cool guests and you know what i had a great goddamn time i had a great time with you adam this was uh the, thank you for thank you for calling me on the phone when I was walking around Mason City, Illinois one day and you're like, well, how about let's do a podcast? Uh, what I about the that. Cubs? I love that. For anyone who f- for somehow thought that this our, our stopping this podcast was a reflection of some sort of personal strife that exists between <laughs> Kevin and I, uh, that c- it could not be farther from the truth. No, I do. I do like people that like bit of fanfic, though. There was like one concern yeah. tweet, one or two that we got. No, that someone like, said I wasn't, wasn't I wasn't prepared for this conscious uncoupling. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, <laughs> such a funny way to put it. Yeah, yeah it's G- Gwyneth Paltrow. It. It's only yeah, only it's only a conscious uncoupling of an RSS feed, I believe. It's exactly. only of a, a of a podcast. Adam and I are still friends. We'll still drink and talk about the Cubs with you uh, anytime you find us, and uh, you know we'll blast it out on At Away Games Pod when we're in Chicago, and we would love to love to see you guys out there. You know we're still and yeah. come see us do stand up shows. Tell them where they can find you, Adam, because they should still be finding us. If, if you've yeah. liked, if you've listened this far, you should find us. Agreed. Uh, I'm at Adam Mamawala on. I think most of the things at amamawala.com slash standup is where you can find my dates or at my link tree. Uh, working on hopefully doing a Chicago date over the summer, maybe in conjunction uh, with that Mets series if I come out in June. So keep an eye out for that. You're in the Midwest all the time, I feel like, doing shows. Where can the people find you? Decent amount. I guess I'll be in Wilmington, North Carolina next weekend, uh, April uh, 12th and 13th or tw- 13th and 14th, I think. And uh, then I'm going to be uh, just Midwest-wise, I guess I'll be, <laughs> I, well, I'll be in Florida a bunch in June. 
afternoon. And then I'll be in Oak Park, a new comedy club in Oak Park, July 26th and 27th. So if you're in the Chicago area, uh, put that on your calendar. Come see me either July 26th or 27th. And I'm just at Kevin McCaff on everything, on the TikTok, on Instagram, on uh, on Twitter, all, all that stuff. And uh, New album and in the works. New album in the works, finishing up the edit this week, and that should be uh, out, uh, you know, in a couple of months, too. This so. one's called Mean and Drunk. <laughs> I was nice and drunk first, and Jed changed me. <laughs> I'm mean and drunk. Uh, so, yeah, thank you. And thank you. We've thanked all the guests. We've thanked, uh, you know, and we've thanked all our sponsors. And really, thank you guys for listening to almost 300 episodes of this. Uh, thank you for being there. We sincerely appreciate it. And, uh, you know, and, and, I, I, I hope the Cubs keep giving you joy like they've given us. And my last thank you, Adam, is to you. Thank you for starting this. My pleasure. Thank you for uh, thank you for doing it. And I think go Cubs. The only thing left to say: play the damn music.